Today's video is all about the DaVinci Resolve tutorial for beginners on the iPad, specifically the iPad Air Generation 5 with the M1 chip, which I purchased almost two years ago. I will demonstrate how to install DaVinci via the App Store, set up your first project, navigate the user interface. We will produce a short clip together as usual. We will cover cutting, adding music, transitions, adjusting, settings and exporting. So it looks like this. Welcome back to my channel everyone. It's incredible that my first DaVinci Resolve tutorial has already been viewed over 25,000 times. I never expected this level of engagement and your feedback is always fantastic. Thanks to your support and suggestions, I've decided to create a video about the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve. In this demonstration, I'll be using the free version directly from the App Store without any additional packages or the paid version. Moreover, I will showcase that it's possible to edit videos on an iPad Air Generation 5 with the M1 chip, although it's not the fastest iPad available. This means you can easily follow along with my workflow as shown in this video. To clarify, this video is not sponsored, but I would greatly appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up and a like, only when you enjoy it, as it helps me continue creating content growing my channel. Thank you so much. So I think there is only one question left before starting why I'm doing this. Frankly, I love editing my videos on my powerful Windows 11 notebook with a dedicated graphic card. However, all the power also comes with downsides. It's very heavy and cumbersome to travel with it. So it's time to leave my comfort zone, set aside my keyboard and mouse and see if the iPad, perhaps with an addition of the Apple Pen, can meet my video editing needs. This is especially important for my next trip abroad, where I want to travel more lightweight. All right, enough talk. Let's install DaVinci Resolve on the iPad and see if it can serve as a viable alternative to the PC or Mac version while on the go. Let's go. All right, here we go. So I have now the iPad here and in order to um, use a lot of data and 4K material, I decided to connect this external hard drive here. You can see how I connect it here, plug it in. And I didn't tell the whole truth. I will use an external device, a mouse here, because otherwise you cannot see where I am and it's easier for you to follow my workflow when you see the cursor directly on the screen. Okay, the first step I already mentioned is we install this app together. So let's go to the App Store. Let's put in here DaVinci Resolve for iPad. The first one is already popping up. And here we go. You can download it directly from here. All right, now we have installed DaVinci Resolve. And the first thing is double tap on the icon and it opens DaVinci Resolve 18.6 mobile. Now we have our user interface, but before I jump into the details of every single icon here, or most of the important ones, I will show you what we do beforehand. The first step we have to do in every project, we go to the project settings and check what our project is all about. So we have not an HD material, we want also to export it in Ultra HD, means we select this Ultra HD option and then our timeline frame rate is not 24. I recorded my footage in 30 frames per second. Be, to be more precise, it's 29.97. When you do not know what frame rates are, check out this video here. I explained it there in every detail and I think then you understand why you should choose this. All right, I have this set now. This is okay, then image scaling, I don't really 
need to change those settings. This is not important, especially for beginners at the moment. So those two settings are the most important ones. All right, so then we click here, save. The next step is before we save our project to import our media, what we want to use. So I go to import media and here I go to cinema, to my folder I already have prepared for this video. And then I have here videos and photos I want to use for my demonstration. For that, I will select the first one and then I select all and it will include all the files which are in this folder. I also included not only videos, I included already some audio files. So I click on open and now it takes a bit, but now we are good to go. So before I start editing this video and cutting it the right way that it looks like the one from the intro, I will just check the uh, settings here. They are fine. And now I will say I go to this tiny house and will say this project is untitled, but I don't want to have it untitled. So I give it a title and save it here about the Loro Park. And it's for you, my audience from YouTube. So this is enough. I set it to done and it's saved. And then you can also say, I want to buy the studio version. I don't need it now. And I think for beginners, the free one is totally okay. All right, not yet. And we can close it. So as you can see in the top here, there is the Laura Park YouTube tutorial for this demonstration already saved. And based on a video, let's go with this one. I will show you double tap. I will show you the most important things of the user interface. So on the top left uh, side here, as you can see, I have the media folder. This means that it will just show you the media here imported. So the second one is sync. You could sync more than one camera based on um, time codes or different angles. I won't use it. All right, then we have the transitions. We will use them. As you know it, maybe from my other videos, the transitions just show you how you can do a transition between different scenes. There are some basic ones in there which are come with the free version, but I think this is totally fine because I used most of the time just the simple ones. I do not like to overdo those effects. All right, then we have the next one. It's titles, titles. It's always good. You can add a basic title here. I most of the time I just use a basic title, use a different font and then you're good to go. Then we have the effects here. You can use some binoculars here as a nice effect, but I don't use this very often. I think this is also a matter of taste, to be honest. All right, good. Then let's go to the next one. Let's go back to the media. Then you have the export section. You press on the export button and then you can see you have here your video in different formats in different for different platforms. Okay, I click on cancel. Then you can toggle between this view means you have, let me double click this. You have this view of this video here, or you can go to full screen. Then you will see it here in full screen and you see more of your video file and the whole video. All right, then you have the inspector button and in the inspector you have the same or most of the icons and settings you can do also on your desktop version. In, in the audio section here, you can um, activate, deactivate the volume, you can uh, lower it, use pen, pitch, everything what you're used to use also in the um, desktop version. The first one is the videos icon where you can adjust everything what you need for this video. So this is the detailed version. There is also a version you can use with shortcuts, but I will come to that in a moment. Okay, let's close this inspector tab here and let's go down here. The first icon you can see here in the middle left section is you can choose between insert video and audio, video only, audio only. So you can choose this here. I keep it 
I go with the first one at the moment, but I will switch them to another one. I will show you. Then those things are just important when you want to add more scenes or more clips directly in the position where you are. So you can put it in the middle, you can put it afterwards, or you can put it somewhere in between. Um, then you have also the option here of pressing it longer to add directly a transition effect as I did now. So, but I don't need it, so I delete it. The next point is you can delete here in the um, bottom left corner also a lot of stuff. So here is um, uh, deleting and here is also the undo and redo button. <laughs> Very important, trust me. Okay, so let's go on with this one. This button in the middle here, as you can see, is simply the play button for this video. Um, this button looks like a setting adjustment button and this is very important because this is exactly how you can activate your shortcuts here and you see the icons. This is a huge advantage, especially when you edit here on a smaller screen because in the first part you can here, for example, um, zoom in, zoom out directly in a video or to adjust the size of the video. We will set this back. The second one is you can cut it. For example, here, I can cut it from here to there and just have half of the video. Also very interesting. Then the next one is our, or my beloved um, dynamic zoom. So move it more here and it should work. Yes, now you can see it better it zooms out of the video. It's also very good because this is all you need. Most of the time you, you don't need really a lot of um, yeah, modifications here. So the next one is, I think what I do not use um, most of the time, but here you can set also some specific attributes here. The only thing what you can do when you want to have an overlay of another video, you can here add some transparency and darken your image. Maybe this is important, I don't need it. Then here you can simply speed up your video. So means you can speed it up. You can see that it changed already down here. And when I jump back, it should be faster than before. All right, good. So I also don't need this just for demonstration purpose now. Let's jump back. So I can set this back to its 100%. Okay, then you have the next um, icon. It's the stabilizer. Um, you can also use it in the inspector here, but the stabilizing effect, I always use the perspective or most of the time, the perspective should be fine. So when you want to stabilize it, you can just go here, click on stabilize, and it will take a bit, and then it's stabilized. So there are no shaky movements anymore in this video. So then we have the next one. This is the camera lens um, analyzing function, but this is only available in the studio version as I know. Yeah, so we can skip this. I never used it to be honest. Then we have the next one. We can set an auto color. Let's try it out yeah, on it. In that case, let me deselect it. Yeah, it changed the color. So this is also, also a matter of taste. I will keep it as it is. And the last one is when you go in there, you can adjust the audio in this part and you're good to go. So this means when I want to deactivate or to get rid of the audio, I set it to zero here and there is no audio anymore. Okay, so this is all about the shortcuts. Let's move on there. You can jump directly to parts. You can set something. I don't use this. This one is very important, especially on the um, mobile version, because as you can see, there is not a lot of space here. Yes, I can enlarge this part, but when I move more files to the timeline, you can lose the overview very easily. So therefore you have this icon here where you can enlarge your timeline. So the downside here is that the main window is very small, but you can work better in this timeline. Another point I really don't like in this version is 
that with two fingers you're not able to zoom in and zoom out of the timeline so the option of zooming here in the mobile version is not given. This is very sad because I always do it in the desktop version. Here you can only try to get more space by moving this up and down. The only thing here is um, where you can jump to certain parts is you use this one, this slider at the top and then you can move through your whole timeline fast and you also can use this one, this timeline directly when you do it a bit slower. Yeah? But this is all you can do with the timeline, so unfortunately there is no zoom in, zoom out effect here. Maybe in a future version, but this one is not supporting a zooming in and out of your timeline. Good, then coming to the next line, here you have some other features I am not using. So this is more like the, um, the view, how you want to view it, if you want to snap it. So when you drop another one, it snaps directly to the next one. You can minimize a subtitle drag, you can display the clip name. So I will activate this, you can see the clip name directly here in the timeline. Then you can trim to audio as well. You can uh, use a boring detector. This is new for me. So when a clip is or an edit is longer than a certain amount of seconds, you can say this is boring. You have to cut it down and you can add some jump cuts. I personally don't like this because I want to judge about my work on my own. Then here in the timeline, you can see that you can enlarge this. Uh, that you see more and you see also the audio track. The audio track for this clip I have already um, uh, lowered down so you cannot see it but we can go here again, go on the audio and then I open it here or I activate it again and I make it louder and now you can see that the audio is still here. Okay, so then I will lower this again and close this or minimize this. Then as I already said you have here at the very bottom left side the redo undo button. You can delete this one. Then you have another interface I won't use in this tutorial to be honest because this is the think where DaVinci Resolve shines. The DaVinci Resolve is really an expert tool uh, in regards of color grading, colors adjusting colors, and this is also included in the mobile version. But I will not touch this in this tutorial because this is for beginners, but you can do a lot here and maybe I will do a separate video. Let's see. All right, then let's go back to the main window we will work with. And uh, I already explained what the home button means here. So this is the overview of your project. So this is your project window where you can uh, export, import also your project to an external hard drive that you, when you lose maybe, or the program crashes that you can um, import it again and work again on it. And you can for sure also create a new project. Good. All right, I think this is all for now for the interface part. Oh, I missed two, I see. Let me check this. This one is, um, we prefer proxy files. Proxies are just files. The program generates in the background that it's easier to process for the software, especially on not so powerful devices. The next one is when you open it, it's the selection of the timeline, basically. If you want to switch it from Ultra HD down to full HD. I think you can do it here when you edit it and with full HD the processing work is not that high. And here you have your audio meter for sure. Let's use this file and you can see the audio here. This is not so loud. Let's jump to the beginning. Let's play it again. And you can see now the audio here is also doing its job the gain level, yeah. All right, I think this was all regarding the user interface. So I would say let's jump right into editing and cutting this video you saw in the intro. All right, let's start with the editing of the video. Okay, so I will start with this file again, but in that case, I don't like this background sound at all here. So I will change it here to insert video only. So when I move this first file now down. There shouldn't be any audio available. So what I want to do here is also to enlarge this a bit and then you can see how 
I edit it so I think I just need not the whole clip so also this movement at the end is too much so I will grab the end of this video and I will reduce it here to let's say 3 seconds 20 then I go again with my slider to the beginning and I will cut this also down that I have just 3 seconds here perfect all right good now I have this video Okay, I will stabilize it, so I already, let me move this down, I already activated these tiny icons, so that I can quickly jump to my stabilizer and I say stabilize it. That should work, so let's check it again. Okay, this is a very nice intro, but I think something is missing. What is missing? Music. All right, so I've already prepared this file, this music file. Um, I downloaded it from Epidemic Sound, so it's not sponsored. I just use it um, all the time, I pay for it, and I really love this source of music and sound effects. If you're interested in, I will drop a referral link down in the description if you're interested in a 30 days free trial or something like that. Okay, so let's continue with this one, so I will minimize this and then hopefully this works i will drag and drop this audio file under the video here so as i know always those files from epidemic sounds are very loud that you can use it in several ways i will go here and i will immediately lower the audio here to minus 224 Good, approximately 25. You can close the inspector again and the media library will pop up again. So I think we are good to go. Here, the one to go to the next one and it will minimize the audio track. So I will lock it here. You can lock it here that you do not move it by accident somewhere else. And also this video should be here, but I do not lock it because I need a transition. So I have the first video here in place. Let's go on with the next one. For that I will scroll up and I will add here a nice video of, let me check this one. No. Oh, this is, this is nice. This is a small waterfall. I will also drag and drop this here. I think for in that case I can leave the sound as it is and I will also reduce this and I will go here and reduce this also to I think two and a half seconds or so is enough. Yeah, let's go here, let's check this. Okay, I think this is too loud. Let's go to this video here and reduce also here the audio a bit, that it's not too loud. And I think we can work with that. Oh, maybe that's not too, so, so reduce the sound a bit to here and then it should be fine. Let me check this out. Perfect. Put a stabilizer on it. Maybe it looks better a bit. So most of the time, it's always good to stabilize it. Yeah, looks very smooth. Okay, then let's put a transition between the first and the second one. I think a nice one. Let's go to transitions here, and then I would say let's go to this non-additive dissolve. I think this will look very nice and let's see how it looks like okay maybe it should be a bit faster so we can also drag and drop this transition here and i think this will work let's go here perfect and as i, as I told you before we can also watch it in full screen here what we already edited Awesome, so let's reduce it again and 
let's go to the media section again and let's choose the next one i think we can Ah, oh, we have here a hanging slot i can put it in here i think i don't need any audio on that so i will reduce this to zero and Uh, as you can see it's a bit shaky so uh, but anyways let's reduce it before I use the stabilizer because the more footage it has to stabilize the longer it takes so let's go back to this one and I think also three seconds is enough so I go here I go to my stabilizer and let's stabilize it Good, it's cropped in a bit, but I think this is working for us. Yes, exactly. So I leave it like it is, no transition here. Then let's go to the next part here. We have some orcas, but I think this scene, this is, yeah, let's, let's, do this as an opening scene I think I can also reduce the audio here to zero then let's see here you can see a preview this is also very fine in the seconds to one okay and because this is another scene and we will have more of this orcas I think this is a change of place and therefore I will use a transition with blur dissolve i think this always works but i will also reduce it to 16 so it looks like this yes Alright, I think that's it for cutting this video. It's a very short one and if you want to see how I cut it in detail and use more audio effects or something like that also on the iPad, which could be very cumbersome as I said when you add more timelines on this uh, tiny screen, um, then let me simply know it in the comments below and I will create another one or a follow-up video on that one. So the last step we have to do here is simply to click this export button. I will export it in the defined frame rate, that's fine. I will also export it in 4K, a 264 master file, that's okay, and click export. Then I will select my cinema drive and I will give it a name here. All right, so I will export it now and save. All right, as you can see, Resolve is exporting the video to my hard drive. And this is exactly the video you already have seen in the intro. So I think that's it. All right, folks, that concludes our adventure with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad Air. Surprisingly, the results aren't half bad for an iPad app, especially considering it's running on an older iPad Air I snagged two years ago. As we have seen, some UI components mirror those from the PC version, while others are different or simply absent. The biggest hiccup for me was the limited space and inability to zoom in on the timeline, which can be a headache when dealing with longer videos or extensive editing. But fear not, there are some perks too. I'm a big fan of the inspector for detailed adjustments and the handy shortcuts that save heaps of time. Plus the ability to hook up an external hard drive is a game changer. So there is no need for opt for the more expensive iPads with larger internal memory. And let's not forget the option to toggle between 4K and 1080p during editing. 
it's a lifesaver on older or less beefy iPads. So my verdict, while I stick to my trusty notebook for heavy duty editing, the iPad is a nifty tool for smaller projects or quick edits on the go. Sure, I wouldn't want to tackle a mammoth 30 minutes video with hundreds of clips and timelines on the iPad, but for those times when you're traveling light, it's a solid option, I would say. All right, did I forget something? I don't think so. But if yes, drop it in the comments and I will be very happy to answer every single question you have. If you enjoyed my new DaVinci Resolve tutorial on the smaller iPad, I highly recommend hitting that subscribe button, giving it a thumbs up and checking out for some of my older videos popping up somewhere around here. Your support means the world and helps me keeping bringing you content like this. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I will catch you in the next one.